test one. Hello, hello. Philadelphia 76ers, yes. Oh yeah. From insomnia to place has Testing, <laughs> testing.
Hey guys, I think we're going to go ahead and get started for this session. For the session, we are going to welcome Andy Bowers. <laughs> He's a UT alum from the CCI Comm Studies program, graduated in 2017. While he was here, he worked in Tennessee athletics, primarily working in media relations for the men's basketball team, the football team, and the men's tennis team, correct? Yes. After graduating, he went to intern with Morris Creative Group, as well as Tombris Group, and then became a digital and social content associate with the Atlanta Hawks. Now he is with the Philadelphia 76ers as a social media manager, which I'm sure can be a difficult task at some times, but we're really excited to hear you talk today. What's up, everyone? How are you? Good, good. So basically, I really wanted to play you that video specifically because that is our brand. Um, with the Philadelphia 76ers, this is something that we really wanted to stay true to. Philly Unite used to be our playoff campaign for the past couple of years. And moving forward this year, whenever we got together and we ideated, we basically said we want it to be our whole entire campaign just because this is the way Philadelphia is, this is who they are, and that's how we're going to move forward. So thank you again for your introduction. Just a little bit more about me. I was here uh, at the University of Tennessee, graduated in May of 2017. I uh, had the opportunity of working in the athletics department uh, through media relations. My senior year, I can get more into the story about that later on. Um, from there, I uh, went and did a little bit of the agency side, but from a sports standpoint, Got the opportunity to work with the Atlanta Hawks uh, for about a year and a half as a digital and social content associate. Um, and then most recently in September, I moved to Philadelphia to become the uh, social media manager of the 76ers. So really today, what I want to talk to you about is how to be on brand and specifically through the 76ers platforms and really the way we approach going forward with our team. Uh, the team in itself, if you all follow basketball at all, um, the team was pretty bad like four years ago. I mean, and just being transparent, they were terrible. Um, so they had this huge thing, and you probably heard in the video itself, um, it was always a process. So some people, again, you might know of Joel Embiid and trust the process, and that's kind of how people associate him. Um, he was the beginning of it. And so we ended up getting Ben Simmons and moving along. Um, and so now we are really at the pinnacle of what our process has become with Brett Brown, the people that he brought in, coaching staff, as well as our basketball operations, um, and the team that we have. So really, this is all about 76ers branding, what we do, and how you can even still apply it to your personal brand today. 
So I want to kind of get into our team first and what we are able to do because of the amount of buy-in that we have from our organization. So the teamwork of Studio 76. I want to play you a little video. I got to go back. It's not playing. Here we go. Our teamwork. Um, we are pretty stacked. Uh, we've got six video producer editors, two digital reporters, three social media producers, that includes myself as a manager, a coordinator, and an associate. Um, two graphic designers, can you all see over there? I'm so sorry, do I need to walk around? Okay, I just don't want to block you. Um, two China content producers, mainly through our Weibo accounts. Uh, China is a huge initiative uh, for our organization. Um, our content director, as well as an asset management director, um, which basically take, takes care of all of our content. Um, and then moving forward, really kind of diving right into our branding. Um, as you can notice, within this photo, we had All-Star Weekend this past weekend, right here. That's so important. Everything about this is so important to us. Um, in the past, we have never really used, as a 76ers organization, any sort of watermarking. Uh, I know our president, Chris Heck, was a little pissed that people were taking our content and using it as their own. Um, even though they saw it on our channels, he was not happy about it, and as an organization, we sat down together and said, what can we do to simplify it? So we added a watermark. Um, adding watermarks to our photography, as well as our video, allows us to own that content. Again, as stated here, um, fan bases, people like yourself, you can go in and crop it however way you want to and take it out, but we, at the end of the day, know that it's us um, and what we're putting out first. Um, and again, to stay it, doesn't just go with the watermark, it goes with what's going on from a campaign. Um, and our campaign, again, if you notice up here, this is our primary goal right here. Sorry, a little shaky. Um, but right here, that kind of deals with the NBA All-Star campaign uh, for 2020. And so we decided to use that. And moving forward into our branding still is really our key pieces of art here. Um, through graphic design, as well as how we approach any sort of game day, that is really a tone setter for us. Um, as you see here, this kind of branding right here, this uh, font is called Cactus. That is something that our branding team sits down uh, at the beginning of the season to really hone out of what we're trying to accomplish, what we want our look to be. Uh, as Philadelphia 76ers, if you all look at brands throughout the NBA, it's very historical, very traditional. Uh, so we like to keep things clean and tight. Um, so from that, we decided to go with this approach, uh, as you can see, Tobias Harris, go Vols, all right? Um, with Tobias, what we decided to do was this was from a campaign that we did uh, at the very beginning of the year. Uh, we had media day. We basically asked our primary focal points of the team, our starting five, and a couple of other people to write a pledge um, and what they would offer the city of Philadelphia for this year. There's a lot of expectations from us and what we need to accomplish. And, uh, with the back half of the season coming up tomorrow, uh, you know, this is something that our pledges are really starting to take hold with. So this was something that we actually hung up in the arena, as well as produced on social uh, with all of our starting five. And then the next thing here, as you'll see on your right, uh, this goes into our classics. So this is our normal branding and what you saw earlier from the cactus font and the blue and the white and the red, that's our normal uh, type of branding and what we push out to our um, fan base, but to the right here, this is from our classic edition. So this is something that was really cool that I was able to be a part of. We wanted to take you back to the 70s. We wanted to make you feel like you were back in Philadelphia, 1972, whenever they came out with these jerseys, and really just make you feel like you're back in the old times and with the tube TV. And we just threw in the old branding. That's actually Ben Franklin Bridge. And it's those little things that give you subtle details. So moving on to the next thing, how we approach our content and what we try to do at the Sixers, um, is quality over quantity. I'm sure you've heard that multiple times uh, in your social media class. Who, who is in here that's in that class? Fantastic. I wish I had it whenever I was here. Um, but quality over quantity is incredible, and that's how we approach our content every single day. I remember being at the Atlanta Hawks and trying to feel like you have to force content from an algorithm. At the end of the day, if it's not your brand, don't do it. Just don't do it. 
You need to create things that are for your voice, for your fan base, and not force anything. So I've got a little presentation here. Um, again, this is something that, again, quality over quantity, I think, speaks to. This was before NBA All-Star. It was during the voting process. And it's something that I think really stood out to me of how we create content at the Sixers and really can move forward. So again, um, this was something for us that I thought was really outside of the box. Uh, one of our producer editors, Maggie Zerby, very, very talented, um, we got together and we said, how can we do something for our brand that is one, clean, but also to something different and speaks to NBA All-Star. So NBA All-Star to vote was through Google. All you had to do was literally something that simple of vote Ben Simmons and it would vote for him. Um, but ultimately, being able to read the room and creating a tailored piece of content for a specific campaign and your fan base is huge. It creates conversation as well as really gets you to the objective that you're trying to have with your audience. Um, so again, quality over quantity I think is one of the biggest things that we strive for at the 76ers. Conversation and voice. Um, this is something that I think a lot of teams miss out on sometimes. Um, and even though as the 76ers we are a historical franchise and an organization, we still like to have a little fun with it. And if anyone follows NBA Twitter, that's kind of the norm. You, you really have to, to stay at the forefront of how people are like, basically talking about you. And you have to be culturally relevant. So this is something that this little piece of content that we had fun with. We played the Utah Jazz. Um, if you follow the 76ers, we are not very good on the road. It is very, very uh, transparent that we are not. But on, at home, we're fantastic. So I really did not want this to go to the content graveyard. And luckily, it didn't. Played them at home. They were talking a lot of trash um, with how we were shooting and playing, especially on the road. And then we were able to use this. So something as simplistic as that can go a real, real long way. It was one of our best uh, engaged pieces uh, from a Sixers win standpoint, uh, if you follow us, uh, which I hope you all do after this. Um, at the end of the day, we look to have fun, engage our fans, especially when we win. Uh, winning is always a fun thing. And finding those little niche things to create for your fan base specifically can go a long way, but can also reach the masses. Um, and you know, I think the biggest thing about conversation and voice that a lot of people construe is you have to find the balance, right? And yes, we want to be a championship organization. That's the ultimate goal. Um, but the N NBA community, at the end of the day, you have to just adhere to the market. You know, yes, be clean, concise, do your brand. 
but also find a way to find that balance of what you can do with NBA Twitter and that kind of community. Because conversation is key. You want people talking about your brand and so on. Speaking of that, um, we really started, I mean, who has a TikTok in here? Let me start with that. Who has a TikTok? OK, fantastic. Um, it's a new emerging uh, media outlet. Uh, it's very fascinating to me. Um, I'm still kind of diving into it and seeing it. But creating conversation is very important, but also showing those player personalities is just as important to continue that conversation. So I, I believe in transparency wholeheartedly. I don't believe in being shy. Um, and sometimes that gets me a slap on the wrist, to be quite honest. Um, but when you look at pieces of content like this, this is our most engaged pieces of content that we have thrown on TikTok, as well as our uh, normal platforms like Twitter mainly, uh, just because people would talk about it. But I'll play these for you. And again, I feel like I'm blocking you guys. Still makes me laugh. Um, and then that really shows the player personality side of things. But in the NBA, you don't have access to your guys that often. Um, that's something that I miss about collegiate athletics. Even though their time is just as valuable, classes, all that stuff, it's really hard to get your guys. So how do you find room to create content when you don't have the athletes in front of you and still find a way to use a trend? So that was a trend that I saw on TikTok. A lot of people were using their moms and a, and a child. Like, it was really funny. So we chose our child, rookie uh, Matisse, with one of our seasoned vets, Mike Scott, who's been in the league for quite some time. And that's the relationship. So that created that conversation. And people knew that's how they've been acting, especially throughout the whole year. And this next piece of content was a trend that I saw, especially through the basketball community, which is something that you kind of got to hop on if you can, um, with the Eurostep and basically a uh, Maroon 5 pay, pay fun song that someone remixed and uh, was able to do something with them. It's crazy that that has as many views as it does. I think we're, I think we're almost at like 900,000, a million, something like that. But something as simple as that for 12 seconds pretty remarkable and we didn't even have him like he, sometimes Ben does not like to do things with us um, but the reality is we were able to take his likeness his personal brand do something that he's known for in basketball hop on a trend and we were able to create and that's our jobs if you want to be in social media through content that is your job to find those trends and find those ways to make content for yourself you know you can't just sit in the back and say well I, w I really wish I had that. Go for it. Create it. That's how our brand really works. So moving on into that is innovation. I have such a talented team. It is crazy the amount of talent. I think you saw earlier how many folks that we have in Studio 76. We are very, very lucky to have an organization that is bought in to what we are trying to accomplish and what we want to do from short form to long form content. And so. We have to think of ways to innovate content. Our photography, I will say right now, is probably one of the best in the game. Uh, there, there's no question. Um, if you look at our photography, you'll see other teams like the Clippers have great photography. Um, I would say the Suns are getting up there as well. But the 76ers, with our photographers, have always been in that category. So something that we look to do, as you can tell, this is from this past weekend. From an innovation standpoint, how can you make a simple photo that will still get engagement and views uh, and impressions, how can you make it something different? We had a 3D effect to it. A lot of people were asking me, how in God's name did you do that? Um, and ultimately, I had seen this before. Um, and the reality is, we just took our camera, was able to focus in on them, and just whip it around as we took the photos. And we picked, I think, the best five to six frames within the middle there that created that 3D effect, threw it in Photoshop, rendered it out as a video, and there it was. So that's something that I think those small little things, and again, simple additions can make it seem significant. 
that we took a simple photo that we knew we'd get videos on, but transformed it into something that's a little bit, has a little bit more meat to it and breadth. And that's something that I think that our brand is looking to really kind of go over the mark for here in the next few months, uh, especially going into playoffs, is how are we innovating? And we get asked that all the time in, in meetings, is how do, you, how do we innovate with our brand where we're still speaking true to the voice um, of being a historical organization, but adhering to our fan base because our fan base is very, very passionate. And they love seeing our guys. They really do. So how are we able to, I guess you can say, diversify our content where they're not seeing the same thing over and over and over? So again, those simple little additions can go a long way. And again, the buy-in is huge for us. And really kind of touching on the last part of our brand and what we really look for is storytelling. Any brand, you can ask this from a Nike perspective, you can ask this of Moon Pie. I mean, who follows Moon Pie? It's one of the funniest Twitter accounts out there. They still tell a story very, very well. Um, so as an organization, we really do take pride in our long form production. Our video producers just, and, and if you don't mind me saying, they just really bust their ass. Like they really go above and beyond to create great pieces of content. So this is an example of one, branded content, but two, what we were able to create from a long form standpoint. It's a show that we just recently sold to Geico, as you can tell. Um, it's called Here They Come. It's our all access where we're really giving people a sense of what, one, our players are doing on and off the court, and two, who we really are as an organization. So I'll kind of show you this real quick. Let's talk about the Philadelphia has bolstered their bench. Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson from Golden State on their way to the Sixers to get some more shooting, some more scoring. Burks has been outstanding for the Warriors. So this gives the this gives the Sixers a jolt now, potentially, through the stretch run of this regular season. They need a few upgrades without giving up much. And they got two guys on minimum contract. Alec Burks could help them win a single playoff game here and there. I think Elton Brand is really smart made some very good decisions so far for the I don't know about you. It really makes me want to go watch the whole entire thing. Um, and I'm not just trying to be biased. Um, and Nick did a great job of cutting this. But ultimately, something that sticks out to me about storytelling is you have to be straight to the point. Again, transparency is everything for us. So as you can see here, here they come, deadline. Hopefully you got the understanding if you follow the NBA, what has recently been going on with the trade deadline. And it was something for the 76ers that we were really focusing on. We, need, we needed scores. Like at the end of the day, everyone talked about how terrible we were at scoring. And we were trying to figure out moves, what we needed to do. And this was kind of the end all be all of here. Woj broke it. We got Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson the third. That's all you really know. We're giving you photos. We're giving you some access and video of them on the court shooting, playing in their first game, scoring their first points as Philadelphia 76ers. But at the end of the day, what happened? So this right here dives right in to how it all went down. And to give you a little context, if we would have kept going into the full entire episode, it shows them immediately at the hotel. We had a mic'd up followed him to the practice facility and shows you really an inside story of Alec and Glenn. So I think storytelling is our really our bread and butter of what we try to do. Um, short form is fantastic. I think you've seen throughout um, this presentation really that we, we strive and we do pretty well at short form. But our long form at the end of the day is something that our executives are bought into. And something that, you know, if someone asked me this question, you know, branded, sponsored content, at the end of the day, the NBA is about making money. You know, we, we are a business. This is not something that, you know, you see. And it, I would say the same thing. Last night I was at the Tennessee game. There's money involved. It's not just guys playing basketball. There is money involved. And, you know, we have a huge market for us in Philadelphia where we're able to sell content because people want to be a part of it. Now the issue is, how do you find a way 
to have someone like Geico being able where their brand stands, what they talk about, to how we match and what we say and meet in the middle. We've had issues with that, a lot of teams have, and I can get more into that down the road if you ask me. But at the end of the day, we found a way to where Geico was very happy with telling a story that we wanted to share and they wanted to be a part of it. But storytelling at the end of the day is something that we're looking first and foremost to do as an organization. So now, I really wanted this presentation to just be kind of short. Ultimately, I remember being at Social Media Week, literally in your all seats, in 2016. Really didn't know what I wanted to do, and I really wish that there was more time for like a Q and A. Um, just I was able to talk to Nate Bain. He was the speaker at the time, as well as Adam Musa. Adam actually, uh, is, he's here now, right? It's, which is crazy to me. Um, comes full circle. He was at ESPN X Games at the time. I talked to Nate, he's now the Tennessee Titans, some of you all might follow him, um, and he really got me into this, and I was sitting right there. Um, so that's my presentation. Anyone have any questions moving forward? Don't be shy, please ask. Yeah? For seniors, okay. It's interesting, because I did it as a junior. For seniors, I think it's, you have to find those internships, right? I think one of the biggest things is don't, don't contain yourself. Don't put yourself in a box. A lot of people out there, at the end of the day, they say they want to move to New York. They want to move to Nashville. They want to go back home. Fantastic. What's at home? Like, if you go to Nashville and you want to work in sports, like, let, let's just do that, right? Let, let's think about this. If you want to work in sports and you want to live in Nashville, what are the two teams? You've got the Preds and the Titans. You've also got the National Soccer Club, to be fair. Um, so you got three. That's three teams that have small digital teams that have been set up for years. So you, but if someone comes calling from the Cleveland Browns for you to have an opportunity to be a part of social media and that's what you want to do, you go to Cleveland. I think having an open mind is huge. At the end of the day, your internship is not going to last forever. Like, get that experience. Go, get in there. Whether that's an agency or that's an actual sports team, go out there, get your experience, do what you need to do, find a way. My digital content role, I was part time. I had to find freelance work to make it in Atlanta. If you really want to be in it, you've got to find those outlets. And for me, I remember calling Nate about the digital content associate job, and I said, Man, I don't know if I can do this. Like, it's, it's part time. I really don't know if I can make this work. He said, this is your way in. Do it. Find a way to work. And here I am. I, I did it. So I think that's the biggest thing. Don't put yourself in a box. Be open-minded to moving, getting that experience. You could always end up back where you want to go or, again, end up, if you want to go to New York, you can go to New York. Just get that experience, whether that's agency or sports, and you'll find yourself where you want to be. Yes, so that's something that a lot of people just do not understand. Um, just because I manage a social media account, that doesn't mean I can go rogue and do whatever I want. At the end of the day, there is a rhyme and a reason for branding and what goes on. We have a PR department. Um, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, I've gotten my wrist slapped multiple times, um, some harder than others. Um, but they, you, you kind of have to read the room. You have to understand what is going on. I cannot imagine what the Astros are going through. I, re I really can't. Um, but like you said, there's a lot of negativity out there. There's storylines. I mean, to be transparent, we dealt with Al Horford now coming off the bench. Um, that was something that a lot of fans started talking about as we were starting to see the way that our group was playing. We have to stay away from it. Like, at the end of the day, let those people talk. Our PR person is telling us, stay away. Just do your thing. Just don't talk about it. So there are people that are in the middle of you trying to help guide you into how they want things to be portrayed. Because at the end of the day, my team and I, we are presenting not just content, but news of our organization from a Twitter standpoint to 1.8 million people that follow us. And again, it's not just people that follow us, it, it's whoever it reaches. So that could be, I mean, definitely more. So 
we have people that help us guide us in those situations. Dr. Haas, yes. You are correct. <laughs> I love you, Dr. Hobbs. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd love to see it. Um, I would love to go to the finals my first year uh, at the Philadelphia 76ers. At the Hawks, I knew I was going nowhere near the finals. Um, I knew that I could take off on April 13th and say, see you guys. Um, but the reality is I think the moves that we made were great. I think Elton Brand has, you know, a plan. It's always funny. When I see him on the bus and you look at someone like him that has all this power, it's like when he takes out his phone, it's, ooh, who is he texting? Are we getting ready to get Kawhi Leonard? Are we ready to get someone huge and just break the absolute internet uh, in the market? But I think we made the moves that we needed to make. Um, they weren't massive by any means, but I think it was a step in the right direction. And, I mean, if I can be candid, I think we'll see something this offseason. If, if it doesn't go the way that we want it to, something will happen this offseason. Yeah, Lauren. Favorite social media accounts to follow? Ooh, from a sports side or uh, anything? Um, Moon Pie is definitely funny. I wish I could tweet like them every day, but I can't. Um, Moon Pie is great. I think their messaging is pretty on point. Um, I would say from the league in itself, uh, from a branding perspective, I love what the Portland Trailblazers do. I really like them, as well as the Toronto Raptors. Toronto Raptors, I think, have one of the best visual appealing uh, social media accounts out there. They just know how to do it, as well as long form and short form. Um, and I think from like a big brand perspective, uh, and this sounds cheesy, just Nike. Nike really knows how to tell a story, and they always grab me. Um, I don't have the funds to buy everything, but if I would, I could. Just from the way that they present their advertising. It's been phenomenal. So uh, from, like a, I guess, like a sports and social media standpoint, what do you think about the XFL and how they've kind of broken into the Twitter game? you think that's long-lasting, or you think it'll just be a trend thing? Um, so actually, from a league standpoint or just from social uh, just standpoint? From social. social, they are doing, yeah, I, I think it'll go a long way for them. Um, if the league stands, they will see a lot more success. It's funny, I actually just saw a tweet right before I got up here that since December, they've grown to like 500K now, like on Instagram. And you, you think about a, a sport as a whole, like that business, it's not a lot, but they started out in December at 70 when they officially announced. So at the end of the day, I think that their social is great. They're very lax. They're doing things that are different. I mean, not just the game and the rule changes, but also, too, to your point, um, I know the DC Defenders, like they're using that Michael Scott, like from the office, they're using all of that stuff within their posting, which is gaining them traction at the end of the day because they're a part of the conversation. They're allowing people to, you know, have you know, all of that kind of conversation in the mentions and just say, this is funny, this is hilarious, and people are just following to see it. Um, which the King's account has done for multiple years now. Um, I don't know if you follow them on, from the NBA. They're, they're a meme account, basically. It kills me, but at the end of the day, that's their brand and that's the way that they went about it. Um, but I think the XFL, from a social standpoint, they have a team set in place and they're doing really, really well. No, Ryan Distier at the De Defenders. He used to work at the 76ers, and he's killing it. Whoever. Do you want, want to wait all night? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're good. <laughs> it's for our viewers at home. Uh, how do you approach giving content that, like, your team creates mm -hmm. to, like, the 76ers athletes? Because the I know, players. like, I really like Ben Simmons' Instagram. And like it's really good, so that's kind of never made me want to follow the 76ers Instagram because I really like the content he pushes out, just like himself. Which is funny because our photographer is his personal photographer. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, 
But that's another story. But no, I mean, you actually have a point. A lot of people, I think that's where the league is, right? Like a lot of people follow guys, not the team. Because I'm sure you like Ben Simmons, right, as a player? Right. If he left, would you? Correct. But would you follow the new team that he's at? Even if you don't follow us? Probably not. A lot of people are like that where they're very focused on the player. I think one of the biggest things that I saw was whenever LeBron left, uh, Cleveland. I don't know if you all saw their Instagram. Their Instagram was like at eight million. I think a week after he announced that he was going to LA, it went down to two. <laughs> like players are this industry. They are the business. So it's funny that you say that just because Alex Subers is very talented. Like his photography is great. Ben himself is very good at social. Um, a lot of people are waiting to see what he's doing. And I think that's kind of the people he run, like he hangs around with sometimes. Um, but even then, he's a notoriable player. Um, and as far as getting them content, they have all of this access, like through Dropbox and through all of this other stuff. But even yesterday, uh, there was a video back here, I think, um, just for reference. Everyone was talking about it the other day. Um, this one. Yep, you are correct. Um, I think now we're at like 1.4 million views. Um, but everyone's talking about how Ben and Joe hate each other. Um, <laughs> give, them a little, give them a little slap. Um, and they love this content and Joe posted it on his personal account and he asked us for that. So a lot of times we'll get DMs from them through our accounts or we'll get texts from them saying, hey, can you throw us this? Um, we don't really use a third party like I know a lot of people talk about open doors as a way to give content to athletes, which is fine. I think it's smart, but also to, that's what our job is as well. Like just ask us for it and we'll give it to you. But, but we also have a bank of content for them to go into. But that's a great, it's a great question. Yeah, go on ahead. With the NBA 2K League um, season three about to kick underway with the, with the draft in less than five days away, um, mm -hmm. and that's I actually one noticed you have on a. a I just got a, I just got a care package from from my friends over there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I noticed that's their two K team. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the big? Do you guys also do the managing on that side, or is that or and I don't know how to put this, but where where I know and I've seen because I've been with the league since its since its inception. Right. I've I've seen how much it's grown with mm -hmm. the social media content presence. Where do you think it's going to be going in the next? Um, shift towards the next to the next championship run here we have in this in the season three window yeah 2k is interesting to me um, we manage that side and to be quite frank with you I don't really agree that we're managing it um, it is through an organization but I have told them multiple times I have played 2k with my friends maybe five times it's a fun game but with my schedule, I just don't have time to sit at a PlayStation or an Xbox and play all the time. And I really wanted a social media manager to come in that knew the league, that knew what was going on, how Twitch works. Literally, that's where the conversation is, is on Twitch. Um, and that's where they literally broadcast every single game. Um, so one, I think the 2K League will thrive, but not as much as they think. Um, I think it's a very niche market. I think at the end of the day, gamers who play it, they'll go for it, but then when they don't, they don't make a team, they're still going to play it at the end of the day, and it's going to be more of a community that's involved with your friends hanging out, drinking beers, and like eating pizza at night and playing your friends rather than becoming a professional gamer for 2K. I think it'll still go through, but there are a lot of hoops still to jump through. That's through partnerships and sponsorships like the more that they can get money for it the better I know the Dallas Mavs organization they do really well at that but they have a third party that runs it for them so I think that that's where we're going to see 2k at the end of the day from other teams like they'll be associated with it but other agencies will run them just because they know the market better they know how to talk to gamers better rather than focusing on like actual human beings Um, hi, uh, hey. I have a 
have a quick question. Mm -hmm. As an international student, how will we be able to, you know, set our foot in the social media or advertising field? Mm -hmm. I understand like Nike or KFC or McDonald's, they do have a business over China actually, mm -hmm. grow larger and larger. But I also learned that the business overseas, such as in China, they have their own like a sort of company to run it, not really, mm -hmm. I, I, I just don't know. But so I just don't know as an international student, if we want to sit our foot in the social media or mm -hmm. in the advertising, so what we can do, which efforts we should put in which direction? Right. So China is like five years ahead of us um, in everything. Um, I talked to our guys, um, IE and Xingda at the 76ers, and they run our Weibo account. And they do specifically driven, created, tailored content for China. And that's through Weibo, those certain accounts. Um, I can't remember the YouTube version. I think it's called to Tokudayu. I know I butchered that. But at the end of the day, I think getting in from an international standpoint, it's finding those positions. The NBA in itself has made it a huge initiative to go international. And my, my issue with the NBA right now is that when they say international, they just mean China. They're not talking about how to get into South America. They're not talking about how to get into Europe. Like, they are so driven in China, which is fine. That's fine. But when you talk international, talk about, okay, how are you growing your market for your South American players, your European players? Um, because right now, I mean, right now, Furkan Korkmaz, like, he is the, I think, epitome of someone that he's from Turkey went off for 30 points two games in a row and he's not that kind of player but everyone in turkey was in our feeds but the way that you mentioned it with china i don't think that they're allowed to really have twitter just the way that they're set up from their social media standpoint so we have our own team of china content producers i think it's up here right now that specifically focus on weibo and those international efforts through china so i think finding those opportunities are just going in like everyone else does through teamwork online. Um, that's mainly the professional sports uh, job postings. Um, and just looking, I know a lot of teams like the Brooklyn Nets are definitely bought into China, the Knicks, the Warriors, the Lakers, and the Sixers. Those are the top five. Just kind of bouncing off of that question, um, you talked about expanding social media into Europe. Mm -hmm. And how do you kind of engage interest in Europe when there's not a whole lot of interest in basketball in general? Soccer will always win. Yeah. I've, I've already, uh, we, I think we've always accepted that. Soccer will always win. But I think it starts with the country. It's like the countries and the continent itself of like growing basketball. I think. The NBA is taking a step in the right direction. They've been having games in London. Uh, they're going to continue that. I know in the off season last year, it was interesting. This isn't just Europe, but the Kings, their owner um, has Indian roots. And so he took his team to play in India. So smart. That was probably the smartest thing that I've seen any owner do, like do. Um, and I think it's just growing the game and you have to take the market, literally the league, and place them there. Um, so I, it's going to take time for Europe to grow. It's going to take time for South America to grow. And literally what I just mentioned to him over here, until a player comes out of Europe that is just absolutely phenomenal, no one's going to follow. Uh, Soccer is going to win. So I think it's finding that balance again of the league doing its due diligence and going to Europe and creating games and platforms where people can talk and have this conversation as well as a player coming out of England and just absolutely killing the game. And that's for any really country at that point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I have been roasted in the mentions. Like, I mean, I might as well have been in hell, like I was roasting. Um, it's just, you know, at the end of the day, we have a job. And um, our brands, so if, when we talk about complete disconnects, right, 
I was at the Atlanta Hawks. We knew we were going to lose. It did not matter, did not care. We were going to do our job. We were going to post our gallery. We were going to post everything and just move on about our day because no one cared. Then you go to a market that literally lives and dies by any sort of sport. I mean, I would be scared if they got a, 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 like an official lacrosse team. It could, be, it could be a Quidditch team, and they would absolutely murder anyone that talks shit about them. Um, and it's true, but being a part of that fan base, you have to be, you, again, you have to read the room. When we lose, don't post. Like, that's just how we operate. That's our brand. It's taken a minute for me to even figure that out because I came from a brand. It's like, just because you lose, it's not the end of the world. But guess what? To this fan base, it is. And you have to adhere to the fan base in this, in this regard, but also finding that balance of what are we doing as a brand to put our name out there, but also not have our fans be absolutely infuriated with us. Because at the end of the day, we can't help the on-court production, but we can help what's being pushed out there. Like that's part of our job. So um, I think our team is definitely, we're finally fully set, and I think that we all have a grasp of when we lose, take it back. When we're losing, especially by 20 points, take a step back. And th that's something I had to learn the hard way too. Um, and when we're winning, just give them everything. Literally give them everything. People right now are riding high on Ben and Joe, so I'm giving them as, many, as much content of Ben and Joe as possible. Anything else? Yeah. What about you? What experiences did starting on the agency side um, have for you as opposed to maybe just starting immediately in sports social media? Like what kind of valuable lessons did you learn through the agency side? Mm -hmm. um, I think strategy. That, that was the biggest thing. Um, what's funny is whenever I was here in the athletic department, it's funny, the guy who gave me this opportunity is sitting right there. Um, but at the end of the day, I learned a lot from him from a strategy standpoint, from strictly a team. But then whenever you're talking about multiple clients and an agency as a whole, that was something completely different. I was doing a lot of paperwork, a lot of um, proposal writing. That was something to me that was huge that I was able to learn, one, to be better at writing, and two, how to effectively promote a brand that didn't have 82 games a season plus and really a fan base. Like, you already have a market, right? Like, imagine uh, being, I think, I'll just use Wyden and Kennedy as an example. Like, not a lot of people know that Wyden and Kennedy does Nike commercials. Like, not a lot of people. People just think Nike does it and they go on. But there's a lot of brains behind the operation and the ideation from the agency side kind of helped me prepare myself how to ideate and strategize from just one team. Because we're creating all of our own content while Wyden and Kennedy is focusing on how many clients. So I was able to juggle multiple clients and it helped me ultimately, whenever I went to the NBA route, just focus on one, which was phenomenal for me. But agency side is great. I highly recommend going to agency side for anyone. Anything else? Um, you talked about having an awesome team that you are surrounded by and everyone's really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. When you have, I guess, content block, kind of like writer's block, but I guess for social media, how do you guys and your team like go about, do you just have brainstorming sessions or how do you constantly, did you talk about just constantly improving your content? How mm -hmm. do you go about that in, to ensure you're not just making the same stuff over yeah, and over? Yeah, um, that, that's a, a great question. We do have brainstorm meetings every, every week. Um, we also, just because the way that we're producing content, uh, we'll have production meetings of what's going on from a community standpoint to um, long form with Here They Come, that, that all access piece. But I think to not get a block, we, we all just kind of have to communicate. And this is a really, my coordinator, she was the last hire, she literally started yesterday. So we finally have a full team. Um, and the biggest thing for us is moving forward and having those brainstorming sessions that we've already been having 
are we on the same page of our content? Like even that 3D photo, that was something that we've never done before and we knew we wanted to test it at All Star to see how it, how it would perform. To be fair, that was a fantastic photo on its own, but we were able to add that little, you know, little bit of touch to make it a little better. Um, and just really seeing how it works. And a lot of things trial and error with us. Um, and I think, I mean, even with the All Star branding campaign, that was something that we were like, what are we doing? for All Star, we have to figure something out. And we just had a brainstorming session, we talked about writer's rooms, we talked about doing a Netflix theme, but then all of a sudden we talked about, this is about the location, Chicago, everyone wants to be there, how do you get people there, what did our player do to get there, and Maggie just created this awesome piece that we're not used to. So I think that's another thing is finding that balance as well, in those conversations of understanding that it doesn't have to necessarily be clean and concise all the time and short. Like we need to just give quality. And if that means it's going over as well as doing something new and different, that's fine. A lot of it is trial and error, but I think to answer your question, brainstorms all the way and just being in tune with one another. Communication is very, very key with our team. Um, Andy, a big round of applause for oh. being here and traveling all the way to Knoxville. No, it's, it's all right. um, I just want to say that as a reminder, Andy was sitting in your seat four years ago. <laughs> so, um, you know, dream big, mm -hmm. um, be strategic in, you know, internships and jobs that you have the opportunity to, you know, add to your resume. But, but above all, almost everybody in the space today is a major of our college, right? And so I want to read the DM that Andy sent me. I hope he doesn't mind. But this came through on June 6th of 2019. And he says, hey, Courtney, hope all is well. I love what all you're doing with social media and the programs in the college. I graduated from UT in 2017 from the Comm Studies Department. Also want to say, if anyone in your classes is looking to do a social media and sports, um, do social media and sports, I'm literally a DM or text away to help them in any way I can. I told myself when I left Knoxville that I want to be an outlet for someone looking to get into sports and social media. When you all threw Social Media Week in 2016, I came um, a, a friend with Nate Bain. He became a huge uh, mentor of mine. He and I still talk on a regular basis about the industry, young talent, and even career opportunities. Please, please let me know in any way that I can help you out, our college out, and come back and give back because I want to be an outlet for someone in the future. And I think that that really speaks volumes for Andy and the passion that he has to give back. And I just want to say thank you for traveling all the way from Philadelphia to Knoxville. And um, thank you again for being here. So let's give Andy a round of applause. Thank you. And if you don't mind me saying one thing to that, I think anyone trying to get in this industry, DMs, wherever the people are that you're trying to work for, go there. Like that's honestly what I had to do. Um, Nate was a huge outlet for me, but at the end of the day, I was DMing Shabazz Khan at the Timberwolves. At the time, he was with the Kings. I was DMing Eileen O'Malley, who is now one of my great friends. Um, she is a social media manager at the Celtics. And just com having conversation. And I think your professors have given you a great lead to this, but don't just ask people for jobs, right? Like, you can ask about a job opening, but make those connections. DM them. Don't be scared. Like, go in LinkedIn if that's how you feel comfortable. But guess where I'm at all the time? I'm in Twitter. I'm in Instagram. Like, that's where I'm at a lot. Go there. Make a network effort. You know, people are not going to think anything different. Just because I think there's been such a huge misconception of, like, going in the DMs. Like, there's been such a huge misconception with that and how you can make actual business connections. Because at the end of the day, they're my friends now. They're technically my colleagues in the league, and that's how I've gotten multiple jobs and, and offers, really. So, thank you again. I, I, I really appreciate you guys coming in. I did not expect this many people. <laughs> um, but again, thank you. I'm a DM away. Like she said, I did the amateur thing and forgot business cards. Um, I have like four. Um, but again, social media. Andy Bowers underscore, that is my Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn. Please message me if you're really interested. I can try to help you 
get in the right direction and talk more. Like I know I can't talk to everybody. I'll be around to talk to people um, if you have like another question that you weren't able to ask. Um, Cause I really do want to help. Courtney hit the nail on the head. Like I was literally sitting right here. Nate gave back. I want to give back. Kellen, honestly, he's sitting right here. He gave me the biggest opportunity here at Tennessee and I'm, I'm where I'm at now. So I want to help anyone that I can. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Right? It was like Christmas. Yeah. It's like Christmas and then you take it away.